You ever question the Bible? I mean, really, it's 66 books laid down in over a thousand years by multiple authors. So can we really trust it's God's Word? Well, I want to prove to you that we can. Years ago, there was a gentleman by the name of Ivan Panin who fled Russia. He was a very smart, he was a mathematician, went to Harvard University. Uh, and he came over here as, as an agnostic. So he believed in a higher power, but didn't quite put his hand on what that higher power was. Well, in his search, he became a believer, became a Christian, and started following the Lord. Well, during that time, he started actively studying Scripture, and he found something unique in Scripture. He found in the genealogy of Matthew this unique thing that started happening is there were multiples of seven all over the genealogy of Matthew. For example, if you add all the words together, they're divisible by seven. No big deal, right? Well, if you add all the letters together, they're also divisible by seven. Okay, that's pretty cool. Well, if you add all the consonants together, it's, they're divisible by seven. If you add all the vowels together, they're divisible by seven. If you add all the words together that begin with a vowel, they're divisible by seven. If you add the, all the words together that begin with a consonant, they're divisible by seven. In, in Greek, by the way. Well, you can continue this. There's 75 multiples of seven. Now, let me challenge you with that same task. Take any, I don't care if it could be a paragraph. It doesn't even have to be a genealogy. Try to create that same thing and make sense out of it. And what's really interesting, it just happens to be that these characters in the Bible were actually written about in other books, not just the Bible. So they actually existed. What's the statistical probability of something like that happening? But that's not all. If you study the genealogy of Matthew, something else happens. Names in original Hebrew had meaning. For example, Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kainan means sorrow. Mahalalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death, shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And Noah, rest. You probably didn't pay attention to what I just said. But if you put all that together and read it, it reads, man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing rest or comfort. That's just in the genealogy of Matthew. Now, if you go to Genesis, you find something else unique happens. The first five books of the Bible are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Can you find something unique there? Well, first of all, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is what we call the Torah. In English, it's spelled T-O-R-A-H. Well, in Hebrew, they often left out vowels. So the Torah could be spelled T-O-R-H without the extra A. Well, this is interesting. In the book of Genesis, if you count 49 letters in, which is divisible by seven, you get to the letter T. You count another 49 letters, you get to the letter O. You count another 49 letters, you get to the letter R. You count another 49 letters, you get to the letter H. Well, that's kind of interesting that that was in Genesis. What about Exodus? Same thing happens. 49 letters T, 49 letters O, 49 letters R, 49 letters H. You get to Leviticus, and I won't tell you what happens just there just yet. Then you get to Numbers and Deuteronomy, and here's what happens in Numbers and Deuteronomy. You count 49 letters in, and you get H. You're like, what happened there? You count 49 letters in, you get R. You count 49 letters in, you get O. You count 49 letters in, you get T, which is Torah spelled backwards. You do the same thing in, in Deuteronomy and get the exact same results. So you get Torah, Torah forwards in Genesis and Exodus and Torah, Torah backwards in Numbers and Deuteronomy. Well, something strange happens in Leviticus. Leviticus, you don't get either one of those things. You get the letters, you count 49 in, you get Y, count another 49 in, you get W, you count another 49 in, you get another Y, and then you count another 49 letters in and you get H. 
it spells in Hebrew Yahweh, which is a name for God. So did you catch what I just said? In Genesis and Exodus, you get Torah, Torah forward. Numbers and Deuteronomy, you get Torah, Torah backward. In Leviticus, you get Yahweh. Folks, there are thousands of examples like this all throughout Scripture. It would blow you away. So my challenge for you is to do the digging. My challenge is for you, if this is real, if God can do this in the very first few pages of the Bible, in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and do the very similar type thing in Matthew, think about how much he can do in your life. You know, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That our sin separates us from God from all eternity. But God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. See guys, God didn't send Jesus to condemn you. He sent Jesus to save you because you're already condemned. I'm, I'm, I'm far from a perfect person. And Jesus knew that. And he knew because of our sins that they would separate us from God that because of what he did on the cross, we could have everlasting life. I'm reminded of the story of the, uh, of the guy next to Jesus on the cross. There was two thieves. One rejected him, mocked him. The other one, he just said a simple prayer, basically he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. The man didn't even have time to really confess his sins. He didn't have time to get baptized. He didn't have time to go to church. He didn't have time to speak in tongues. He didn't have time to join a denomination. No, he just simply surrendered his life to Christ. And as a result, Jesus said, basically said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And he was set free of his sins. He got to experience eternal life. And my challenge for you is to do the same, is to surrender your life to Christ acknowledging that he died on the cross to save you of our sins, save us of our sins, and give us everlasting life. But he also was kind enough to leave a book behind to give us life instruction. So my prayer is for you to say a prayer asking Jesus in your life, surrendering your, surrendering your life to Christ, acknowledging that he died to save you of your sin. I appreciate the time. Thanks so much for watching, and God bless.